no, I actually have to try and work harder on living in the moment. But yeah, I'm always thinking about like, what's next. And um, yeah, I, th- I mean, I think especially this year, I'm like, you've had so much time to think. And, um, and so I'm like, I'm trying to figure out how to like, play solos on electric guitar because I'm so bad at that. My dexterity is like terrible. Cool. Um, but I'm like, how sick would that be? Hey, and welcome back to another episode of On the Porch with Front Porch Music. I'm Logan. And I'm Jenna. And we are back. We're back. And we have a really big announcement. We are going to say, we're, we're, we're making this happen. You heard it here first. Episode 50, we're going to be talking to the one, the only, Shania Twain. Heard she has no first. idea. She doesn't know yet. But we figured, let's manifest it, and it's going to happen. And if you all help us out, manifest, send us her way. Yeah, you need to help make this happen, too. Episode 50. Yeah, episode 50, we are 45 episodes away. <laughs> <laughs> the countdown is on. Not too far to go. <laughs> well, we have a great episode for you today uh, with Taylor Ray. Yes, Taylor Ray. Born in Alberta, but living in Vancouver, BC now. Uh, Taylor Ray is the second best Poznitskov sibling. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Taylor, you're my favorite. She is on the road to a million streams with her latest single, Are You Still Up? We have lots to talk about with Taylor today, so let's get right into it. So pull up a chair and join us on the porch. Oh, that's new. <laughs> Is it Taylor Ray or Taylor? Or how, how do I address you throughout this? Taylor Ray, Taylor Tay, TR. I mean, I I get it all. TR, like Thomas Rhett. Have you, what's that oh, song? Oh, okay. Yeah, just like Thomas Rhett. No, okay. <laughs> I, I've already messed up. This is so funny. There's a song where Brett Eldridge yells like, TR. <laughs> that's like, when you said TR, I was like, oh my God, that's funny. Oh my God, you're talking about me. It was you. It was, <laughs> yeah. What an honor. Well, thanks for joining us, TR. <laughs> how, are, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Just back to Vancouver with the snow, which is feels like I never left Alberta. So, mm. with uh, with people can't see this, but with with a very nice backdrop behind you, that's like some very nice wallpaper. Yeah, it's a shame. Like, this isn't visual. <laughs> yeah. I like to keep it tropical. It was getting a little, you know, boring around here in the pandemic, so I had to deck out the wall. It looks great. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, Jenna and you have connected a few times, but I haven't had the privilege of getting to know you much. So why don't you tell me like where you're from, who you are, all that kind of fun stuff. Yeah. Um, I grew up in Edmonton and just grew up singing with my dad and, and doing music that way. And then around 13, 14, he let me know that I wasn't too bad if I wanted to. <laughs> to buckle down and actually do something with it so that's when I kind of got into like those little uh competitions at the malls and stuff like that um and then I ended up moving to Vancouver to do the business side of the music industry just because as we know the industry is a bit of a shit show so uh so that was really good and I ended up just staying here and finding a band and making my network here so I mean it's a beautiful city the lifestyle is incredible but (laughs) but yeah so I've just, I've lived here for like eight years now, which is so strange. And it's, I feel like it's a weird identity crisis with Mm. um, whether or not I'm like Albertan or BC now, you know? So my family for Christmas got me a shirt that says just a kid from Edmonton. (laughs) (laughs) And they're still in in Edmonton? Yeah. My whole family's there. I just spent the last month there over the holidays. A month. Whoa. Yeah. I know. It's easy when everything's remote. True. You're right. Yeah. Good yeah. call. Good call. Yeah. <laughs> so Jenna and I were talking earlier and she said she had a story about you. We met in the bathroom. That was my story. <laughs> <laughs> That's I about think... all there is to it. <laughs> That's iconic. It's so funny. So we were at um, London Music Hall on the Friday night of the CCMA weekend. And I just come out of the bathroom and I'm like washing my hands. And I look down and this girl's got these like fresh white boots. And I just look up. I'm like, your boots are awesome. How do you keep those so white? And she, she's just like, Look at the insides. They're actually a mess. They're like, they'll get messy. Right. And that was literally our interaction. White boots are brave. I know they look cool though. They do look cool. Yeah. (laughs) So we, Megan and I leave the bathroom and I'm like, I think that's Taylor Ray. Didn't think anything of it. Like kept like went back to our night kind of a thing. In the morning you walk up at media row and you're like, Hey, we went in the bathroom last night. (laughs) 
And Tara Lee walks up and goes, I hear you guys met in the bathroom last time. We were like, <laughs> oh my God, that's so funny. We did. <laughs> it was so funny. Like, it's been so long since we've been in a setting like that where you can like meet people in the bathroom, yeah. you know? <laughs> Compliment each other in the bathroom and then move on. I mean, that's not normally like a common place to meet people. No, I don't know. It is for girls and bars yeah. and stuff. Like, it's a thing. Although, I guess I did meet uh, Jacob Hogart in, in a bathroom. You'd say that, yeah. Yeah, that's not as awkward as it sounds. <laughs> it was more just like, oh, hi. <laughs> it wasn't even like at a show or anything. No way. But that's yeah, we fun. first heard about you when we got a release for your song, Are You Still Up? Yeah. So we listened to you. That's where I first heard of you. Um, I looked into you a little more. I was listening to your tunes a little bit. But yeah, Are You Still Up is like a banger, eh? Wow, thank you. You're so welcome. I <laughs> Yeah, I uh I actually love that song. It's it kind of surprised me coming out and like doing what it did right off the bat with like the Amazon music stuff and and whatever. Um but yeah, so it's definitely nice cuz it's so different. Like I feel like over the past couple of years my sound has just like evolved so much. So to have it come out and then actually be successful-ish was I mean, it's pretty cool. What did your when you say like your song, your sound has evolved. How how did you kind of start out, and what were you kind of playing, and what was your vibe? Was the evolution like yeah, like on purpose or? Yeah, definitely. Well, I yeah. So the first stuff I did was just like I mean, like a lot of us did. We grew up singing like '90s country and whatever, and I love that style so much. Um, but I also know that it doesn't fit in super well right now commercially, and I feel like maybe it'll it'll come back around at some point, but I just felt like I needed to evolve my sound to like kind of go into that commercial lane while still holding on to like what I love to do. Like I, I'm a vocalist. I love to sing. And I also love to put a bit of an edge on my song, like a little bit of a rock edge and stuff like that. So I feel like we, my producer Dan Swinimer and I kind of found that middle ground a little bit where I can still feel like myself, but also maybe be able to fit into more of a commercial lane, which I think as an artist, you kind of you kind of have to do at some point. <laughs> I, like, are you always thinking ahead of like, what's next? What do I want to like? What do I want to bring into my kind of toolbox or my little kit of skills and you know sound and how I present myself? Like, do you think about that or are you like living in the moment? No, I actually have to try and work harder on living in the moment. But yeah, I'm always thinking about like what's next and um yeah I I mean I think especially this year I'm like you've had so much time to think and um and so I'm like I'm trying to figure out how to like play solos on electric guitar because I'm so bad at that my dexterity is like terrible um but I'm like how sick would that be you just on stage and you just break out in a solo I mean it'd be nerve-wracking but anyways (laughs) um but yeah, I think you're constantly constantly trying to figure out like how to make it bigger and bigger. And I mean, one of those steps is working with like Tara at GPS. She's incredible. Just like evolving business wise, I guess, along with the sound. Because I just feel like if I could take like the music I'm making now and pair it with like a super awesome team that hopefully, you know, you end up with the like I Heart Future Star kind of stuff or mm. trending track Stingray and I don't know. It's and and it's such a shot in the dark. I mean, it's you just never know. There's so much music coming out all of the time, which is really tricky as an artist. You almost have to like remind yourself to stay in your own lane and not like look at everybody else's stuff. But um but yeah, I think just like making like I over the pandemic and stuff, I feel like I've tried to just focus on like making a brand more so. So it's like a little bit more well-rounded, not just like, "Hey, I'm Tay and I like to sing like 90s country and sing rock songs and wear band tees. <laughs> the, the business side, side of this, of this industry is, I, I think it's hard to navigate, especially like when you're a creative individual and then like balancing the creative side with the business side. And especially as an indie artist, like you're expected to kind of be able to do it all. Yeah. Like, is that kind of your experience with it as well? Yeah. I've found, honestly, I spend more time working on the business side and I have to actually remind myself to sit down and like work on the songwriting and stuff like that which is why it's nice when you book a co-write because you like force yourself to do it Hmm. um but it's so easy to get so like wrapped up in the okay i haven't posted on social media in three days what should i post and um and like calling and booking shows and trying to navigate like what song to release and all that it's yeah i mean 
it's so hard because you can look at other people and go, okay, well, they did that. Maybe that'll work for me. But majority of the time, it's just so tailored to you as an artist that you can't really, like, you can take ideas from other people, but it's really hard to, like, you can't really mimic it because something different works for everybody else. So it's, yeah, it's it's a really strange in- industry. And, like, everybody I talk to, um, when I was initially getting into the, like, business side of it, I'm like, so what should I do? Like, what's the move? And they're like, oh, there's no industry standard. I'm like, That's pardon me? What? <laughs> I'm like, and I'm like a bit of a perfectionist and I'm like, I don't want to just half-ass this, you know, I want to, I want to do it right. But you also, I, I feel like, you know, there's some things I've done right. There's some stuff I wouldn't do again. And like, you literally don't know until you do it. It's does yeah. I'm getting type A vibes from you, which I relate. How do you keep that in check when you're like also trying to be a creative human being and like, you have to go with the flow. So how do you not just like combust? <laughs> I know yeah it's actually it's tricky like I I don't know I it's hard because I like try to enjoy the moment of like like are you still up coming out or my song before hellbent coming out it's like trying to enjoy the moment of all that which is good but then also trying to balance like okay so you can relish in this moment for like a month maybe and uh and like think about are you still up only but then after that you're kind of like okay what's next so I'm trying to find that happy medium because I instantly I'm like oh my god great the song's out now I need to get going on this other thing otherwise I'm going to be behind the eight ball and everybody's gonna be booked up and it's just like yeah it is really hard I feel like I haven't found the perfect balance but I just book co-writes now so that I like force myself to do it or like I bought a calendar like an agenda um which is organized right but I do that every single year and I use it for the first month yeah (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I do that. And, yeah, I do that too. But like almost every week, I'm like, it's gonna be a new week, so organized. And then t- Monday's just great. Don't look at it. And again. then Tuesday never happens. Yes, I know it's so true. And I'm like, yeah, I'll write down my day, and then all the time I'm like, oh my god, I don't know what I have going on, even though I wrote it down. I just never think to look at any of that. Do you get so hard on yourself about that kind of stuff when you don't like follow through with your organization plans? Um. Not too bad. I just think because I'd never, I like, I always want to be that person. Like if I get really stressed, I'll go to Indigo and buy like those calendars that stick on your fridge. I'm like, oh, so fun. So cute. Uh, but yeah, I never use it. So I think just because I never got in a routine of that, like it, uh, I, I mean, I, I don't think about it. Obviously, I clearly don't think about it. <laughs> yeah, my, like my attention cannot keep that in check. Like, no, I'm good for a day, but then I forget it all. Yes, totally. That's why a lot of times I'll leave like emails unread Me and too. stuff like that. Yeah, which I hate. Like I hate seeing that there's emails unread in my email. <laughs> but, and then, but I'm like, otherwise I'm gonna forget. See, but I do that, and then I'm like, and then I get overwhelmed by it, and then I end up having like just leaving it for way too long, and then I end up with like 37 unread emails. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jenna wants to kill me right now. Absolutely. <laughs> I want to go at you about that, but I don't, it's, it's okay. It all work in different ways. I'm like a do it now, get it done person all the time, yeah. every time. Yeah. So that kind of stuff. I'm like, there's a schedule, stick to it. That's why the we work well together. Can. Yeah. <laughs> You're the organized one and I'm the do it when you want kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. It's wicked. It's good to have a little mix of both though, you know? It is. I'm also like, I can be flexible too. I'm not like, no, we have to do this, but mm. like. I try to be as scheduled or like as organized as possible. Makes me, gives me calm, you know? Mm. Yeah. What this yeah. is also demonstrating though nicely is like, I'm enjoying, are you still up for like six months or whatever? Maybe not quite six months. Who knows what time is anymore? But like, I'm enjoying this yeah. as a listener, but we listeners forget to, like on the flip side of that, like you get to enjoy your song, like in like way before we do, like you get to, mm. you know, go through the process of recording it and listening to the, the demos and the mass getting the masters back and getting so excited that's your moment and then we get to have our moment while you've already moved on from it almost right like you put it out and you're like oh I gotta move on we're all like I love that song it's great right it's crazy (laughs) it is so it is so weird because like the lead up I mean are you still up for me was this like the song that I was just so excited to release because I'm like it's so different than what I've done before but it's just like it just hits you right in the face you know um it does I listened to seven songs in a row and I picked one out of it and it was yours. And then I gave the rest elsewhere. Wow. Yeah, dude. Thank it's a banger. 
Yeah, I I'm so glad you think so because I like I have been yeah up up to the release date getting the cuts and mm-hmm. even like the scratch track that we just laid down in like 20 minutes or whatever. What does I'm that like, mean? What's a scratch um, track? So when you go in before like all the musicians record on top of your song, you go in record like a scratch vocal just to give them the outline over top of like this. oh so it's, it's almost yeah. like the blueprint like yeah 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 it's like a demo almost how's that different from the work tape the work tape is when you write it and that's it right yeah so like depends who you're writing with i guess some like if you're writing with a producer and stuff a lot of times you'll record your kind of like demo there mm-hmm. um so you'll have like more of that outline but for my um but for like when you're actually going into the studio because they don't have like you want to put your own spin on it. You don't want to just like work straight off of the demo. Right. Um, yeah. So they, like my producer, Dan, he just made a track, like a basic one and I sang over it. And then, uh, yeah, but even getting like the, that sent to me was just, oh my God, I was freaking out. I'm like dancing, dancing around my apartment for the last year. And then it came (laughs) out (laughs) and I was so pumped about it. And I'm, and I'm actually still excited about it. I feel like that song keeps kind of like, keeps rolling which is so cool but um it lives it lives yeah it's so good well our feature that we did of, of the song is still getting traffic every month so it's really yeah it it's performing well oh that is awesome mm-hmm. yeah yeah no i it is it is interesting though because yeah like you said like you guys are just hearing it when it comes out where i've already heard it 1800 times and analyzed it and yeah and i am also really bad with that where i'm like I hear everything in the song. So I'm like, mm-hmm. if I hear like a weird, like mouth noise, I, I always feel stupid. I'm emailing Dan. I'm like, so there's a mouth noise at seven seconds and at 16, like, <laughs> like, so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> What's it like working with Dan? He's like a sought after producer. He's not incredible. like, a, he certainly is a sought after producer. <laughs> <laughs> He's like pretty good. <laughs> no, what's it like? It's actually amazing. I was, well, cause my, this stuff I worked on was with, um, Tavish Crow and Dan and Tavish is like insane too. Like he wrote, um, he was a co-writer on call me maybe, mm-hmm. which is nuts. And never so heard it before. Yeah, never heard it. <laughs> um, and I just kind of like, I was so nervous going in to meet them both. Cause I'm like, Oh my God, you guys are so accomplished. I feel like there's so much a part of you. That's like, are they going to like what I do? Like I, cause I, I mean, I know you, everybody it's a business right that's what you always remember but you it's nice to find people who invest a little bit more in something than just like the business side of it you know and and so with them it was like we would sit down for an hour and a half before recording and we would just like talk about the industry and talk about maybe where I fit in and yep and um and honestly he like Dan would just kind of pump my tires which was which was neat because I felt like I needed that at that point you know where I'm like I feel like he had a lot to do with why the songs have been coming out the way they come out just because he's like he's good at kind of understanding where you would sit in the industry and like and really good at telling you and you believe like it's nice hearing it from somebody in the industry that you fit in somewhere you or maybe doing something different than other people you know especially hearing it from someone who's creating your song with you like exactly I I feel like that's got to be really super important to have someone who's in your corner pumping your tires right before you record and write Totally. Yeah. Well, and he, and he's been so great. Like he'll, if I have questions about the industry, it's like, we just hop on a phone call and it's, he's been a bit of a mentor, which is, which I didn't expect to get out of that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's been super neat. He's, he's just a great, great dude. Totally. What's one of the most important things you've learned from him so far? Um, I think the one that I remember the most is not feeling inferior. Because I think it's, I, I mean, I'm so bad at it. I, I'm sure there's a lot of artists who struggle with it too when you're like on social media and, and everything looks cool on social media. And I know that. Um, but you're looking, you're like, oh man, like they're doing so good. Like, or um, in the industry, if you feel like maybe that person, like one of the higher ups aren't that kind to you, you know? Um, he's like, people will talk down to you or speak a certain way or think they're better than you. But that's not like, that's not real. People, people who feel that way aren't actually better than you. They have something like deeper going mm. on and whatever. And I, and I always kind of like try to live by that rule too. So maybe that's just so I don't take things personally, but, um, but yeah, I think it was just kind of a confidence boost just being like, you know, just because somebody speaks a certain way does not mean you are anything less, I guess. 
I think that feeling of like almost imposter syndrome is pretty common in this industry. Like, like feeling like, oh, maybe I don't belong here. Like, I, I know that I feel that way sometimes with, with front porch and in the business side of the music industry, yeah. like from, like front porch aside. Um, and it's really, I don't know what, I, I don't know if it's just a, like a music thing or if it's just like everyone feels that all the time everywhere. I mean, like from, if I could put my psych hat on for a second here. Your what hat? My psych hat. Oh, right. <laughs> Sitting beside my textbooks, by the way. <laughs> like, they're down there. But like, um, imposter syndrome is like, has like been on the increase for a long time. And there's a lot of things that go into creating a sense of imposter syndrome and internalize. It's like imposter syndrome is internalizing this feeling of like, I don't belong here. I'm not in a, like, I'm can't do this I'm not good enough to do this I don't have the skills to do this kind of a thing but like the rise of social media is a huge thing that gives people Mm. like that influences imposter syndrome because you have those comparisons and they're readily available to you to go find like who's better than me now I have all of these things I can't I perceive that I can't do right so it's totally a thing like across the board but it's very prevalent in an industry that's so like you said like there is no industry standard. So what are you even like comparing yourself to? You have no clue, right? Totally. Yeah. It's, I don't know. It's crazy. And you know what? Like, I feel like we just had a therapy session. You're welcome. Yeah, I know. That was great. Charged by the minute. (laughs) (laughs) I think it, I mean, people, I feel like people as a whole, it's like, nobody's, nobody's like fully confident all the time, you know? So I feel like it's so easy to feel inadequate or something like that just because because and especially because of social media and all that too right it's yeah. just it's so easy to look at somebody else that's why I really love TikTok these days oh, it's so funny. I love TikTok I love it I've wasted so much of this pandemic scrolling through TikTok I'm, and I'm not even mad about it Logan went viral on TikTok I went viral on TikTok shut up what I mean I don't know if it's actual viral but like we're gonna call it viral it's almost 100,000 views yeah I would call that viral it's no big deal. Thank you. Oh my God. Twice. <laughs> How did you do Twice. it? Um, a shot in the dark. Yeah, I, I wish I, I, I wish I could tell you. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but I. He had an idea at three o'clock in the morning and texted me about it at seven o'clock in the morning. Thankfully. Yeah. <laughs> about like. Well, because like, like, okay, like, let's step this back a bit. Like, I was during the pandemic, I was scrolling TikTok, and then one day I was like, I'm wasting so many hours on TikTok. I need to do something productive with tiktok or with something in general yeah <laughs> and then like the pandemic was just, like yeah. there's nothing else to do it's like let's just make some tiktok videos i was like let's do it for front porch because then it makes me feel like it's part of the business <laughs> 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 it's an excuse to be there so i was like trying to think of things to do and then it was like three o'clock in the morning i woke up i was like oh i think i have an idea for like for a feature like a little series let me text jenna and see if this is actually like a good idea or if it's just like one of those stupid 3 a.m ideas that are actually stupid yeah um so I so I, I texted Jenna and I was like what do you think about doing a series of like of 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 classic country songs that you that you forgot about not even classic just huge country songs that you forgot about um yeah and she was like that's actually a good idea yeah so like it, wow. I did a couple and it like yeah it did really well there was a short he did a, you did a whole series there was like eight parts yeah I want to do more but they Wow. When you stop going viral, it's less motivating to do it. <laughs> I believe it. That's amazing though. I actually don't know how people go viral. Like I've put it I put a decent amount of time into my very first TikTok and I thought it was hilarious. And I like <laughs> wait a minute, I want to um, watch it. It's um it's like getting from your car to your apartment in COVID times. Hmm. I'm going and to. um it's like Mission Impossible themed and I thought it was so funny. I'm gonna and play it. It got like 200 views. <laughs> We're going to live. Isn't that so That's depressing. so. <sighs> Jenna knows all about that. <laughs> the look that Jenna just gave me. <laughs> Did you do this by yourself? <laughs> no, I was with my boyfriend. I was like, where are you setting this phone up everywhere? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's hilarious. That's so rude. That is funny. Uh, so rude. I know. He's so lucky. I'm like, excuse me. I have so much. <laughs> He's so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> we'll post a link to that video in our show notes oh my gosh thank you <laughs> funny yeah i'm brutal at tiktok oh me too i well and i it like the trends is. are so dumb and <sighs> when you do a trend i feel so shamed 
<laughs> Doesn't it feel a little sad? Yeah, it is. Like I did the one. Um, I don't know if you guys saw it, where it's like um the One Direction one, where you have the sound is go. Even wait, the one um night changes or something, where you're just oh supposed God. to fill in the last line. I'm like, yeah. oh, this is so dumb. But I did it, and it got like a hundred views. I'm like, what? I don't get it. I don't get it. It's fine. The algorithm hates you. Well, this feels like a good time to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. All right. Tell us about how it's been working with, sorry, how it's been working with like the GPS team, the GPS promotion team. You work with Tara. Mm-hmm. She's pretty dope. She's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's funny. It's like I, in the Alberta aspect of things, like everybody knows everybody and I'm kind of just like on the outskirts of that. So I actually like them bringing me into that community has been so, so awesome. Like, especially at CCMAs and stuff, it was nice to have a bit of a home base Totally. versus just kind of like looking around, not knowing where to go. (laughs) So yeah, Mm. no, they've been, they've been awesome. And like, and Tara's just, I mean, she, she kind of just grinds right like she works her butt off so it's cool to have somebody like that working with you and kind of being on the same team as you just because she's I mean she's been in it for a long time now so yeah it's been awesome she totally has what was your highlight of the CCMA weekend um I would say with uh, Doc Walker (laughs) yeah I was gonna say Blue Jay sessions probably yeah yeah it was it was so so cool. I'm like, I just wanted them to sing Rocket Girl. <laughs> they didn't. No, but they no. okay. So they did it at the Sakamoto party the day before, and I understand why they wouldn't do it at Blue Jays because I'm like, you know, I'm sure they've worked on new stuff too. <laughs> but like, everyone's here for Rocket Girl. <laughs> Every, everybody's there for Rocket Girl. Yeah, they're yeah, they're so funny. I was like, I was so scared that I had to pull out a Blue Jay sessions because I blew my voice out on Saturday. From like yelling and everything. I was absolutely panicking. I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm going to be in the round with Doc Walker and I'm not going to be able to sing. Like it was, oh, worst thing ever. But then I had a Moscow mule and sat down and yeah, everything <laughs> turned out fine. It all worked okay. Yeah. Whis- whiskey always helps. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. It was, yeah. So no, that would probably be my highlight. They were, yeah, that was pretty epic. Very unexpected. Pretty cool. You know what? Yeah. That Sakamoto event was really cool too. I like, I've, Doc Walker is my childhood, so obviously I'm a huge fan. But they were being announced, and the crowd, like, it was, like, a busy, like, networking. People were chatting, and nobody really paid attention to the intro at all. And then they started to play, and I have a video of everybody's heads just, like, suddenly, like, people just shut up and, like, turn. And I was like, that was such a moment. I was like, cool. That was so so cool. So cool. It's so cool. I I love watching, because I, like, my parents came to CCMAs this year, which was hilarious because they're just kind of along for the ride and they were they were freaking out they're like this is so cool like they couldn't they couldn't believe that doc walker was just like right there <laughs> oh man so like have your parents always been super supportive of of, of your career in music yeah super yeah. supportive they just like they were never like stage parents though really they just kind of let me do my own thing and mm. they were more of sounding board um but yeah but my dad like he would he would be as involved as I want him to be at this point because there's there's been points where I'm like oh maybe yeah like he can help me with certain aspects of it which has been good um, but yeah so they're they're super supportive but they uh, they uh, just keep they're like well we just will like if they miss a show they're like it's fine Tay we'll come watch you when you're playing in an arena and I'm like excuse me <laughs> <laughs> you can't just be there for the good times here. <laughs> I need someone in the audience. <laughs> yeah, like, well, you guys are so fickle. What are you doing? <laughs> are, are they musical at all? My dad is super musical. Like that's how I got into singing is he had this big, um, cause he used to play in bands and all that. And I think then when they had, had us, he kind of quit that, put that on the back burner a bit. So he set up this like huge bar in the basement with like this epic sound system and like, karaoke machine and all that so um so we grew up just like they would have parties all the time everybody would come and sing karaoke and then 
um eventually they would just like put me on the mic because i got this little karaoke set and just sang like the lion sleeps tonight over and over and over again <laughs> and uh and my dad's that- like hey you should learn a new song <laughs> so is that still your karaoke song of choice no it's not <laughs> it's i just like i just like <laughs> <laughs> I oh my gosh I will never forget though how hard it was for me to get that wee, 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 <laughs> bit. I'm like I just worked at it can you do a cover of that song? Yeah, I was just gonna say, can we please get an exclusive cover I, I'll do it I'll do it that's now, how you go viral on TikTok are you freaking kidding me can you imagine do, do it. it do it <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm gonna do it now I'll, I'll give it a go Cool. See what happens. If I go viral for that, that will be something. Are you going to be embarrassed? <laughs> no, I'd be more like, what the fuck? That's my next single. <laughs> <laughs> <What> is- <laughs> <laughs> like you can put some like quality content and it's always the stuff that you spent two seconds on that goes viral. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. It's true. So yeah, is the internet amazing? is like my parents. It, the internet's pretty fickle too. Yeah. <laughs> Just like <laughs> <Yeah>. your parents. <laughs> <laughs> So your dad, you know, told you to learn new songs and that's when you kind of were like, oh, maybe I do know how to sing. Yeah, well, because I always loved it. And I was like, well, it was one of those things where me and my two friends, Kennedy and Alexa, we'd always be like, I want to be a famous singer when I'm older. (laughs) And it was like, and we would say that for so many years. And then eventually they were like, "Mm, no, I'm not going to do that. It's not realistic. And I was like, oh, my gosh should I do you I have to drop the memo? off this? it's not cool anymore <laughs> like, what and um so anyways but I would just like sing with my dad um all the time and he would just throw on like Garth Brooks and Alan Jackson and Hart every like everything and I would just try to sing it and then uh yeah and eventually I was just I would always talk about wanting to like do music I'd be sitting in the backseat of the car and Shania Twain would come on the radio and I love Shania Twain but I was like Ugh. I can't even listen to it. I'm just so jealous that she's on the radio. Like I was so <laughs> upset about it. I'm like, I want to do that. So, um, so then my dad, like eventually, yeah, like 14, 13, 14, he was just like, yeah, you can actually sing. So if you want to go for it, you can, but, um, but oh, yeah, I love that. Yeah, it was, it was good. It was good. And so I would just like my first performance ever though, was on the mall stage <laughs> in West Edmonton mall. And I have a photo of myself. I look terrified, like actually terrified. You know when you're scared, but you can pull it off? Like yeah. I couldn't. You had no chill? <laughs> no, no. I absolutely bombed. Like, Oh no. Yeah. Well, yeah, it just was not a very good performance. I think, you know. So you're yeah. what, 14, you said 15? Probably 14 at that point. And then it so was just how do like. You, how, how did you jump like how did, did you keep scared? going with yeah, it? How, like, did it not scare you? Like away? after you bomb when you're that young, especially, how do you keep keep pushing yourself forward? Um, I don't know. I just because I, I think a, I, I think a lot of kids that age would be like, well, I guess that's not it for me. Yeah, so. I think it's uh, my parents. It's funny because, uh, and I got this gene too. Like the there's a bit of a lack of sympathy because my mom always said, well, sympathy doesn't really get you that far, Tay. Like I can have mm-hmm. understanding for you, but I don't need to have sympathy for you and stuff like that. I'm like, okay. And um, and so after I bombed that performance, I was so upset. And uh and I was like, Tay, well, like, relax. It was one performance, it was your first performance, like move on. And she just like didn't let me be mad about it or upset about it. Which at the time I was like, Oh, you're the worst mom ever. Like that is so <laughs> rude. And now I'm like, uh, maybe it just kind of let me brush it off a little bit more than just like sitting in that feeling of not being good enough you know I, I guess it gave you you know that that gave you something else to be like to put your your negative attention on like ugh, mom <laughs> Instead of, as oh, opposed no. to ugh, more, i was more mad at her yeah than than bombing yeah maybe, that, so, maybe that's a smart tactic blame your parents for everything yeah, well no but yeah that one yeah that one <laughs> seems to work <laughs> <laughs> all right I'll, I'll go i'll go with it <laughs> but yeah no i i mean it's i think for them like anytime i was ever upset they would they would be like quite understanding and for a hot minute they'd be like yeah Tay, like it's okay like whatever and then they just like move on it's time to just move on so hmm. cool which is so which they is taught cool. you resilience to say exactly the least. exactly like when i broke my <laughs> when i broke my wrist in elementary i fell off the rings and uh and my dad like didn't because i i used to play hockey and uh my dad didn't really know what was going on like the secretary called my dad and she said something happened to your daughter's arm you should probably take her home 
and I got in the car. He's like, so do you need to go to the hospital or like, what's the thought here? I'm like eight years old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, no, I'm not going to the hospital. He's like, okay, do you want to go um, like shoot some pucks? I'm like, yeah, that sounds <laughs> oh good. God. I'm like, I had a broken wrist and we're just like in the middle of this hockey shop shooting pucks against the wall. <laughs> That's that's what I grew up with. <laughs> wow, that's some serious resilience. I mean, that that also kind of happened to me too, not with hockey pucks, but like I've broken so many bones in my life, like really? to the point to the point where like I like I don't even know how many anymore. Yeah, I have I haven't in like ten years, so knock on wood somewhere. Well, yeah, I'm knocking on wood right now. And like I've like I broke my femur in half when I was two. I broke both of <sighs> I broke broken both of my arms multiple times, most of my fingers. I'm a klutz. It, it's never from an interesting story. Thank it's God you were only two. I want to know how you broke a femur when you're two. Wow. Oh, well, that's a funny story. Well, it's not that <laughs> funny. But my dad my dad had just finished building like a play structure outside, like from scratch. Like he built it. He's like, so proud of it. I get on it and I fell off of like the rain, like the, the, the ladder to get up it. I fell like maybe three feet. But I guess just the way I landed, femur snapped right in half. Ew. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. You're also two, so you were further from the ground than you think you are, right? Yeah. yeah. Did you have the but, calcium or? I, I, I don't know. Like, like, <laughs> like, Drink some milk. Not even a joke. <laughs> my parents and I were separated when, like, when I was like, I, I, I one of the times I broke my arm and, so that we could be questioned, like, separately from, from, like, children's age. To be like, oh, do no. your parents beat you? <laughs> no, I'm just clumsy. So, like, when Whoa, I broke, yeah. Yeah. I broke my foot when I was, like, 20, like, 19. My mom, my my mom was like, "Is it your driving foot? No, I've dealt enough. We, we we've dealt enough with your broken bones. Get out of here. Go to the hospital. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> you are. Fine. That's so funny. Whoa, yeah. that's intense. Yeah, and like a couple, like one time, like I broke my thumb, and one time my dad was like, "I don't think I'm gonna come get him from the school because I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> I'm sure he's fine. It's just your thumb. Yeah." It's old, you know. This charade is old now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, like broke another, broke another limb, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> for attention. Yeah, yeah. I was definitely. I'm, oh. I was the only child. I didn't need any more attention. <laughs> Imagine being an only child. I don't understand. That'd be crazy. I would. I would get so. Maybe. I guess if you were, if that's all you knew, right? It'd be different. There's some. But, there's definitely some positives, but there's definitely a lot of negatives as well. Yeah. You learn. You learn a lot. Um your siblings I'm, yeah like i had an older brother and we would riot in the house when my parents would leave like we would just <laughs> we would just fight like to no end and um i'm like yeah i really you know you learn a lot from that but like right. i also learned a lot from being alone too just like how to play be by myself and, yeah totally and whatever but like as i'm getting older it's like i kind of wish i did have siblings because like you know my parents are getting older as well and i'm like i yeah. just want friend <laughs> yeah. yeah i don't know how yeah. we got here I don't remember that's funny breaking bones breaking bones. shooting pucks yeah breaking all your bones yeah um yeah i don't know where, i don't know how to transition there neither do i but we also have to we gotta get go we're, co we're coming close to the end here okay um what's come what's coming up next for you taylor ray um i'm recording some new music right now <laughs> so yeah so that'll probably be probably release a couple more singles but probably release an ep in the fall like late fall oh yeah yeah which i'm super excited about um True. we're just kind of flying by the seat of our pants but for Ball sure new music is coming yes yeah. yeah thanks so much for joining us today yeah thank you for having me <laughs> it's, been an, it's been an absolute pleasure getting to know you and and our your fellow broken bone stories <laughs> And we're looking forward to your viral TikTok video. Yeah, of the lion sleeps yes. tonight. I am going to work on that. Today. I think you should. I should. <laughs> I should. It would be a good experiment. If that goes viral, that would be something, wouldn't it? Yeah. Tag us in it. <laughs> yes. We want to see the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Taylor Ray. Thanks so much. Thank you, guys. Thanks so much for joining us on On the Porch with Front Porch Music. I love talking to artists and digging deep into the world of Canadian country music, and I'm so excited you joined. If you liked this episode, please rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast. That's the easiest way for you to support this show. You may even get a shout-out. So we'll see you in a couple weeks next time on The Porch.
on the porch with front porch music is hosted by me logan miller and jenna weiser the theme song was written produced and performed by owen wrigley